Kuzu Zangpo and a very warm welcome to Bhutan this week with me, Nangye Wangchuk. Our topic stories. The parliament declared Denji as Pemagasal Songkhak Chomde. Parliamentarians recommend cutting down annual budgets of those offices with audit irregularities. And the case involving former Gelifu Dungpa is now with the Dungpa court. The parliament declared Denchi as Pemagasal Stonkak Tromde and Nganglam as Yenla Tromde. They also declared Betika as Paros Yenla Tromde. The special committee was formed after the parliament's joint sitting failed to decide on these Tromdes. The discussion had begun in the last summer session. Prior to the endorsement, this time, the committee of 12 members from both the houses held many discussions. The recommendations for endorsement with submitted were submitted based on the principles of balanced regional development and decentralization. As mandated by the constitution, all the Zongkaks now have Zongkak Tromdes and Yanlak Tromdes. Also as recommended by the special joint committee, the government will discuss Paro's Zongkak Tromde issue with the Zongkak Tsogdu and submit a report during the next session. Earlier, people of Wangcha and Hungril Geoks in Paro had raised the issue that the finalized delimitation of the ECV was in accordance with the draft map approved through public consultation, although it was endorsed by the parliament in the previous session. People claimed that some 500 acres of paddy land have been included under the new boundary of the Trom. In the meantime, the Speaker of the National Assembly will notify the Election Commission of Bhutan to postpone the upcoming local government elections for Paru. Although endorsed by the parliament, the chairperson of the National Council who abstained from voting for the recommendation said, postponement of the LG election was not in line with the Election Act and Local Government Act. Of the 67 members present, while five abstained, six voted against the recommendation. Economic Affairs Minister said that the government hopes to allot a quarry in Taksha for the Punatsangchu project too soon. He was responding to Gangzur Minji MP Karma Rangdul, who asked the minister about the status of the Taksha quarry in Wangdi Fodrang since there was problem in acquiring the quarry site from a private owner. Economic Affairs Minister said they have already submitted a report to the National Environment Commission after conducting the impact assessment to study the ecological carrying capacity of the area. The minister said they don't need huge amount of stones at the moment since the dam construction is yet to begin. But whatever little amount required is bought from the private quarries at Taksha. At present, there are six private quarries in the area. So by the time the dam construction begins, the government hopes to allot a quarry to the project. Swing de Magalsen, BBS News. As Parliament referred the Public Accounts Committee's report, parliamentarians called for concerned officials to be strictly held accountable. Other than this, they recommended cutting down annual budgets of those offices 
with irregularities. The Public Accounts Committee reported that although the allowances were objected by the Royal Audit Authority in 2009, some embassies are still receiving the allowance. They said the issue was discussed in the third session of the second parliament and it was recommended that the concerned embassies repeat the allowance immediately and take necessary administrative actions against the concerned officials. However, no action has been taken over the issue so far. The latest audit finding shows that Bhutanese embassies had made inadmissible payment of 400,000 newtum as the education allowance to its staff. The committee reported that allowances were paid for those children studying in government schools in Bhutan. As per the Foreign Service rules and regulations, such allowances are payable if the children are not in receipt of free education in Bhutan or abroad. <laughs> However, some of the members said such alliance should continue until the Foreign Service Rules and Regulations is revised. The document was last revised in 2002, although it has to be reviewed every three years. The conclusion of the meeting was that the government should not be able to do it. The government should be able to do it. The government should be able to the <laughs> Tato <laughs> The discussion over the issue will continue tomorrow. Srinzam, BBS News. The Public Accounts Committee also recommended that payment of children education allowance by Bhutanese embassies to its staff should be stopped till the Foreign Service rules and regulations is revised. However, most members suggested that otherwise. Irregularities of government offices, corporations and autonomous agencies in terms of access payments and advances to various officials and suppliers were noted to be prominent in the report. Of the several over and advance payments, the highest was by Dungsam Cement Corporation, followed by the Royal University of Bhutan and Ministry of Health. Dungsam Cement Corporation Limited was found to have done access payments of over 190 million newton, more than 19 million newton of overpayment of supervision fees and accounts was done by the Royal University of Bhutan. Ministry of Health has given access payments of over 9 million newton while procuring medicines at higher rates instead of lowest evaluated rates. Member of Parliament Tharchin and a few others outlined that such cases can be avoided if monitored more strictly. Zonkhanalo inu day, Zonkhanalo inu day, Zorikpa disu imese shunila. Nibagi thega hebdalo dinalo chala nami di 
dang achire ki gerde nalo chala nami disu me gerde zotin zotin nalefa chala nami disu ger songle nalefa chala nami disu me se shunila sumba ki theka hebdar dang achire ki accounts personal se dab dang achire ki sizin ba disu me se shunila hani ki dadi ka chite mojo konsum ani khad dum di ki beta collision yubi ki tasin ji bombe rana tumde se shunila ani ki theka hebdar loeta shungi khatule di ki thablam ji gadi be dip dagam some members pointed out that annually there are irregularities being highlighted in the report. Apart from recommendations of enforcing accountability, it is deemed necessary to slash yearly budgets of offices if irregularities keep on occurring. <laughs> Tani ngache gentry di takta kim kya ko vachin ta lengha chigi na le te nile be di kibe matun be ki te chulmin ki thole te achre zinjong ki te le chim le ge di kibe bebe hui vachin te lotar ki charngil di ngache na le chaju dubi me te ana le te saya chutam de chi dudik be di kibe chidik ma be vachin te kora ka thole gobi ki nil mangil changir de zinjong ki charngil na le. The House resolved opinions of MPs will be noted. The discussion on the report will be continued tomorrow. Bemal Hadden, BBS News. The Public Accounts Committee of the Parliament attributed that poor response from the agencies has led to low recovery of irregularities from 2009 to 2013. The total unresolved irregularities from this year's stand at over 612 million mutram. Agency-wise, the highest unresolved irregularities from 2009 to 2013 was from the ministries with over 545 million mutram. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs topped the list. It was followed by the corporations and financial institutions with over 48 million mutram. Benden Cement Authority had the highest unresolved irregularities in the group. The highest unresolved amount of irregularities were reported under the category shortfalls, lapses and deficiencies. Tato Dang, Sinyo, Sidik Benilu, Lady Kagi Gozin Sugi, Tekardu, Tigin Bagobdu, Sishuni. Di Beole, Sishik Nishu, Chutu Bewe, Nimle. Senyoksu, Dao Chuniki Nanke, Sitik Ju Masubachin, Delit Gopinlu, Lady Kagi Gozin Sugi, Chimten Dan, Chimten Dalin Begop Masse, Tarchit Neri Myang, Lothar Shingi, Silo Suna, Inda Gobe Se Sumchulu, Lothar Sishi Nishu Nalu, Nyam de Beni Denlu, Keshun Sishi Wanzinlu, Nishu Begop Du. The committee also recommended the Royal Audit Authority should report implementation status in 2015 annual audit report as a separate chapter. The deliberation will continue tomorrow. As per the third session of the second parliament, the unresolved irregularities till 2010 should have actually been resolved by the concerned agencies by April 2014. Irregularities from 2011 to 2012 were to be resolved by November 2014. But as of September this year, irregularities amounting a little over 53 million nitum has been resolved. Chetan Dupchu, BBS News. Minister for Economic Affairs said they have requested the government of India to increase the monthly quota of 50,000 LPG cylinders to address the problem of shortage of LPG cylinders. The minister also said they have sent some 75,000 cylinders for requalification, which is causing the problem. He was answering the Nubi Tangsivi MP who said people are facing acute problem of obtaining gas cylinders on a timely basis. The Minister for Economic Affairs attributed the problem to increasing demand from rural areas such as Kasa, Tashigang and Chuka. He said they have looked into three measures to solve their problems. Catchy, sumchu, 
debet qoran ki chu dig bet debet toy se shunil ta di ngachari ki hole to kholu se de pp sarai te da di ngachari ki subsidized gas cylinder di member besim da te commercial gas cylinder kap di te lalin thap ko be te machi ki ka jana na sarai te di lalin ka debet thabi na te ngachi ki ship che be di ki be te zeni ki te lerim cham di ki be ye se shunil until then the problem of getting lpg cylinders is likely to continue Sonam Singh for BBS News. Finance Minister Namgidoji said it was not illegal to waive off customs duty and sales tax on import of books by the government. Rami Singh Asang MP Ugen Wangdi said the change in tax rate is not legal without the parliament's approval. Ugen Wangdi asked the minister when the government will submit proposal of the tax rate change to be ratified by the parliament. In July, the government exempted the customs duty and sales tax on import of books for 2015. The National Council today called on the government to take urgent and appropriate action against Mongar Dramice's GUP as per the provision of Local Government Act. The GUP had transferred his census to Ngasangyok even before his term as the GUP of Dramice was over. Members of the National Council said the GUP has breached the Local Government Act. The Act requires a person to be registered in the civil registry of his or her constituency in order to be elected as a member of a local government. Sani Jungi Tumichigi, Konagi Nilo, Chambigi Namdulo, Konagi Damba Satim Chemule Gewa, Niva Saktuki Chatim Le Gewa, Sumba Ranzi Kunju Namchele Gewa, Yasuba Letendi Gibe, Tako Gonju Tango Besunilla. The Gonju Tani Dia Danga Chiregi, Konagi Sani Jungi Chatim, Densen. Sumjuso Chibigi Jabada Tapaginalo, the removal set that the Kadibek and Tanina, Tisukara Seribu, and the Bevalet Tendigue, Tangachigi Dredu Dambadi, that Sani Jungi Chatim Tardo, Konagi Palo, Discipline Committee said the Dapalo, Kongi Sokunche Sonido, Konagi Geoyagi, Songhayagi Sodu, Tizingi Uzu Digibe, the Dasosonda di Sukaratina Chamatobe, Konagi Sokunji, Gordon Tapsinalobe, the Gonjutani, the Samj Tenjabera de Lal and Tabubigi, Dredu Dambadi de Insishunilla. The members also said the local government's rules and regulations should incorporate a clear procedure for disqualification of a member from an elective office the moment his or her census is transferred to another constituency. The upper house also said by-election for dramatic GUP posts must be conducted immediately. All the 20 members voted in favor of the adoption of the recommendations. Tsringzam, BBS News. The Office of the Attorney General has filed about 55 charges under eight different cases against Gelifu's former Dungpa. The cases were registered with the Dung Gelifu Dungka court last Friday. The Dungpa has been charged with black marketing of Toke Geko, corruption in the rental charges and management of Gelifu's Losel Cinema Hall and Gelifu Hot Spring, among others. He is also being charged with misusing power and forging documents. The Royal Audit Authority and Anti-Corruption Commission had investigated the case since June last year. Doctors say cervical cancer is one of the deadliest disease but most easily preventable. It is still continues to claim lives of increasing number of Bhutanese women with Timpu, Tashigang and Wangdi Fodrang topping the list. In the last seven years, 135 women died of cervical cancer. Some 300 women from Kabisa Geok in Punaka came together to observe World Cervical Cancer Day and met the doctors. I did Pesmia tears 15 years ago in Thimpo. Now I am doing it for the second time. I am very happy to see the doctor here at our doorstep. So, leaving behind all my household chores, I came for checkup. This is my first test. I visited the Bunaka hospital for four times but couldn't do the test. I'm very happy to get such medical facility. We used to go to Bunaka hospital but they don't entertain us and recommend us to visit the BHU in our village. 
It was difficult to live with pain, but after receiving treatment, I feel much better. I'm still undergoing treatment, so I just came to see the doctor. Dr. Ugin Somo from National Referral Hospital said cervical cancer can affect a woman at any stage of life. She said cervical cancer is common in Bhutan because of poor coverage by screening. Among the women who got cancer in Punaka, most of them were from Kabesa. So we came here to sensitize women on the importance of having pap smear. So if we see the whole country data, it's mostly diagnosed, cervical cancer is mostly di uh, diagnosed, highest are diagnosed in Tashigang, Thimpu and Wangdi and most of the deaths were also from these uh, Zongkaks. In Bhutan, more than 50% of the women diagnosed with cervical cancer are below the age of 50 and pep smear tests will help detect the cancer early for timely medical intervention. Kampal for Choni Dema, Swing Dema Gelsen, BBS News. The Chong Zong will be renovated at an estimated cost of 30 million mutram. The works will begin next month. The amount will be used to restore some parts of the structure that were damaged in the course of time. This section of the wall collapsed earlier this month. Home Minister Dawa Gelsen, who was at the site, said the maps and designs for the renovation are ready. There are also other parts of the zong that will be renovated. A report from the Division for Conservation of Heritage Sites say this portion of the wall was not renovated during the major zong renovations in 1999 and 2005, though there were plans to renovate, but it collapsed even before the works could begin. The report also states that the wall had become weak and might have collapsed by the vibrations triggered by the blasting activities from the nearby hydropower projects and road widening works. The Trongsa Zong is different from other zones. The walls were built differently in different times. And the collapsed wall that we see today can be rectified without touching the other parts of the zone. This time I think it is due to water seepage from the toilet and moreover it was already cracked. So without delay we are now planning to start the renovation works by December this year. Trongsa Zong, the largest song in the country, was built in 1647 by Chuji Minjur Tempa. Compiled for Surja Manthapa, Swing Demogalsen, BBS News. To encourage people to take up mask dance as a profession, mask dancers in Samti say there is a need to increase the remuneration. Measly allowance, according to them, is making mask dancing an unattractive choice among younger generations. Behind those striking fearful marks is the heart-hitting reality of how much hard work and practice have put in as they keep spectators entertained for three days hechu which ended yesterday. Fork and marks dancers demand accuracy and discipline which makes it challenging especially if the dancers are new in the field. Folk and mask dancing are challenging and since most of our dancers are hosampas, it is very challenging when you have to teach them the hands and feet synchronization. However, there is a greater challenge to these traditional folk and mask dancing. In the last couple of years, many Zongkaks have reported that low remuneration is a main reason where practice of traditional folk dancing has declined in most villages. Most of the Zongkaks are facing similar problem and it is because of the low daily subsistence allowance which is discouraging them to take part or show interest to take up folk and mask dance. For instance, the daily subsistence allowance paid to these dancers far exceeds the expenses they incur in the light of escalating transport accommodation and food cost. It is very difficult to find folk and mask dancers from villages, mainly because of the remuneration. We need to be in the Zongkak for about two months to practice charms.
For instance, we pay our replacement 300 mutram a day to take care of our farm activities back at home while we are here practicing. And we get a DSA of only 150 a day. While troop leaders such as Todam and Champin are paid a DSA of 200 mutram a day, traditional folk and mark dancers are paid 150 mutram per day which is still below the minimum daily wage for the national workforce of 165 newtons a day. The last revision in their DSA was made in 2006. For Sonom Pinso in Samsi, Dojitama, BBS News. Well, that's all we have for this week's edition. Join us next week, same time, same channel. This is goodbye.